Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at ACR DevOps where we look at task and webhooks in Azure Container Registry. Today we're going to be looking at Azure Container Registry tasks and webhooks, and these are ways to automate tasks using ACR for inputs into ACR as well as outputs from ACR. Now, there are two sides of this. ACR tasks are essentially build jobs that can build Docker images within the context of ACR. And once the Docker images are built, they are then pushed into a Docker registry on Azure Container Registries. And these can be triggered by a couple of different things. They've been uh, triggered by an image change to a base image. Maybe that base image is on Docker Hub or somewhere else on Azure Container Registry, and that base image change uh, changes, and you want to update everything downstream of that. Well, ACR Task can automate that process for you when that base image changes. You can also do it on a timer, so you can set a schedule, and then every hour, every day, every week, you can rebuild an image, or you can do it based on code pushes. So you can hook up ACR to GitHub, and then with that, when something gets pushed into GitHub, it can trigger a build on ACR to take the code out of GitHub and the Docker file therein, and then build an image on ACR without having to do that in a local context. So this is essentially just a way to automate your builds on ACR without having to do that on an external DevOps tool. Now, you can also do outputs from ACR based on some things that happen within ACR. So with webhooks, you can call out to other things that support webhooks. So what that means is with an ACR push, for instance, you can call out to something like an Azure function or an Azure automation job and have that execute some code based on something that happened in ACR. So this allows things like when new images are pushed to ACR to uh, notify a webhook that an image was pushed, and then you can notify the environment that's running that image to update itself based on that new image. So that is how webhooks work in conjunction with ACR. And then you can put these two together to create inputs into ACR and outputs from ACR to create full uh, DevOps pipelines with ACR kind of being some glue in the middle as it relates to container builds and container pushes, pulls, and so on. We've looked at this slide before where we talked about container workflows. With a container workflow, you basically have a dev environment that will take a Docker file, take that Docker file, and then convert that into an image. Then you push that image from a dev environment up to a container registry. And then once that copy is up in the container registry, you can run a command that will then take that image and put it into a container runtime, such as Azure Kubernetes Services or Azure Container Instances, where that image will be running. And this workflow is pretty much the same for DevOps. It's just you delegate some of the responsibility to other component. So if we had a full pipeline, it might look something like this, where I have a dev environment on my left over here. And then I have code that I then push to a repository. And that code is now in the repository and it triggers something outside of the repository that is going to respond to that push into the repository, which would be an ACR task or something like that. And then ACR task will then pull the code from the repository and then build a Docker image from it. Now, once that Docker image is built in that context, it then pushes it into ACR task, which calls a webhook. And that webhook will tell the container environment to pull that image and then run that image as a container. I'm in the Azure portal and I am in a resource group where I have a couple of different resources configured. I have a container registry right here that I'm going to be using for my demo for this particular demo of task and webhooks. Now with the container registry here, I have it connected to a GitHub repo as well as a 
webhook that I'm going to use down here. But to show you the site that this is ultimately going to deploy to, currently I have an Azure Container instance that is running a single container that looks like this. It's just the simple site that I've been using for a couple of demos already. It says, I am Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. Now I want to change the content of this site. So I'm going to use this pipeline that I've built out to change the content of this and change something on this homepage just to show you how it works. So to show you the actual pieces that I've got in play here, let's go back to my resource group and look at my container registry because this is the glue that holds all these pieces together. Now, down here under services, I have, you can see I have webhooks and then I have tasks. Um, right here under tasks, I have a task that is designed to build a image up on the publication or a push to a GitHub repo. So to show you what that GitHub repo looks like, let's go to github.com. And um, I have defined that right here under ACR demo. And it's a very basic repo that just has some a Docker file and uh, my content for my site. And this Docker file is very simple. It's basically using the Nginx base image and then copying content from my repo here into this location in the image. So basically replacing the content of the website that this Nginx web server is going to be serving up. And what I did is I wired it up to this task so that when I push to that repo, this task will trigger. And here I've got several runs I've already run when I was building this and testing it. So um, getting all this thing, all the automation figured out is uh, part of the process of getting these pipelines working. So once I got this one working, which is fairly straightforward, I had to use it to test the flip side of this, which is the webhook. So this task builds an image, puts it in a repository here called my site. And then once the push happens to my site, it calls a webhook right here. And the webhook is on a push action and it calls into a, a webhook that I have defined that will then take this image and deploy it into my container instance. It really is not pulling the image and deploying it per se in the task. What it's doing is it's telling Azure Container Instances to, hey, there's a new image, go pull that image and restart yourself. So to do that, what I did is I defined a automation task and a runbook inside of Azure Automation. So I created an, an automation account and inside of automation accounts, you have these things called runbooks, which are basically scripts that you can wire up as as either on a timer or you can deploy them as part of some kind of other automation tasks that you define inside of automation accounts, but I'm using them as webhooks. So whenever I build this particular book here, web run book, I have this option called webhooks that I have created. Now to show you the code here, it's just a PowerShell script. It's nothing particularly fancy. Uh, so if I go over here to my run books, click on this guy and then go into edit, you can see here it's just logging into Azure and uh, there's most of the code here is really just logging into Azure and then once it does that it calls a a command to basically go out there and restart my container instance that is running my site right there and it's in that web app for Linux resource group so once I have that um, I can publish this again uh, I didn't change anything but just to make sure it's not in edit mode I want to publish it and now I have my webhook and then inside of my Azure Container Registry, I can go back and then look at the the webhook for this guy. It's actually defined as a resource here, or I can go through it to the Container Registry. And here is, I, you can see I've been trying to figure out my script to make it work. There was a few things I, some snags I ran into when I was developing this. Uh, but once I got it all working, everything seemed to be uh, up and running. So under configure, this is where I drop in the URI I got from Azure Automation. And I can do other things like uh, determine what actions. I can do a push, pull, delete, um, those kinds of things inside of my the actions I want to use to invoke this particular webhook. So with this, that basically means that I have a full pipeline that will take all of everything from end to end so basically what i need to invoke this is change something in my repo and then the the dominoes will then start to fall so to do that i have down here my sites that i have defined that i've used in other demos before and this is the current one that's tied up to my repo it says i am sacha nadella which we've seen already and that's just looking at the local copy of it and that's the one online so inside of my 
site here, I want to change this site to look like this one. Uh, so this is just running off of my local file system. And this is the one that says I am Blaze Stewart, not CEO of Microsoft. So let's close that out, uh, pull that down. And I'm going to take this file here and uh, copy it back up to my site three into my site folder here and just replace it. And so what that will do is replace the contents of that file that I had as my index.html for my website. So now that I've got that done, I can come down here to my CLI here and I can do some you know, git commands. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do a commit and then, uh, and then I can do a push. And the push is going to push it to my GitHub repo. And I've already wired that up. I connected it, built it, a get in it, and all the other kind of stuff you do. Uh, and once I have that, the push going, now that's going to trigger all of the downstream things that are happening as a part of this particular pipeline here. So if I go back into my... If I go back into my web apps for Linux and look at my container registry, I should be able to see the task fire. And uh, this is the one that uh, looks like this is the one that just fired right here. So it is uh, shows me the logs for it, and I can actually see what happened. Uh, nothing in particular. It's just you know running the the Docker file to copy out the content and all that. And now that that's run, I can come over here and look at my webhook and then come into this guy and I should be seeing an invocation here that was you know within the same time frame at 334. So I know that ran as well. So the real test is to see if my picture is on that website instead of Sacha's so that we can validate that this is actually working. So let's go back to my resource group that is web app for Linux and let's pull up my container instance. Now, when I, when I first pull up this IP, it might not, it might still have Sacha's picture because it's a cache copy, but um, uh, no, it actually didn't use a cache copy. It actually used me again. So if I reload that a few times, so you can see now that my picture is there instead of Sacha's. So the pipeline did work from end to end simply by doing a get push. So all of this works together to give you that full DevOps pipeline for containers. I'm not using any really fancy tools here. I'm not doing any kind of of integration with something like Azure DevOps. I'm just using some of the common tools that developers use like GitHub and uh, ACR is one of those things that can hook into that and then have uh, lightweight DevOps pipelines. If I needed something more sophisticated, I would use Azure DevOps, which we'll look at in another video as it relates to containers. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.